What's good, everybody? This is your boy Chuck Deagle, aka The Lone Wolf, and we're coming back to you with another episode of Sake Sundays. Special shout out to our sponsor, Sake Hi. This is your all vegan, all natural, gluten free sake brewed right in Kyoto, Japan, and you can order it all over. Website is Sake High. Go ahead and check them out. And we also want to give a thank you to our other sponsor, God's Favorite Jewels, for providing this nice lapis luzivi lapis uh, bracelet for our guests. And it got me decked out. Got my tourmaline cords, my mahogany bracelets. Make sure you check them out too. God's Favorite Jewels. We're all God's favorite, and sometimes we just need a little reminder. And then that brings us to today's guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell the people what you do. What's good, Joel? My name is Omiete. Um, I'm a musician. I make Afrobeats music. I'm also an actor and I'm a model as well. Right. You got a triple threat right there. Yes. You can feel me. Uh, which one did you start first? I started music about... Dang. I started music like a long time ago. I think 12 years ago. 12 years ago? Yeah. I lived in Nigeria at the time and... Um, I don't know, like everybody made music and I was, yeah. I, was, I was jealous. I wanted to get in on that. <laughs> How did you start off? What was the first thing you started singing? Yeah, if you could call it singing. It wasn't, uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't very good singing, but yeah. So basically I started off with that. And then uh, I, my family moved to America and it was easier to get access to studio equipment. Yeah. So I started, you know, messing around with producing, but it wasn't very good either. So eventually I um, decided to go to school for music. So I went to school for music four years after I can finally say I'm actually good, you know, at that point, but I still felt like I wasn't where I wanted to be as an artist. So I took a long time developing and eventually, you know, I'm, with what I have right now, very confident with it. All right. So you said about 12 years ago, you started like learning your voice, right? Oh, how old were you? Oh, I'm 25 now, so whatever that matter is. 13? 13, yeah. All right. And then when was it that you guys came to America? I was 16. 16? Yeah. All right. And then once you graduated high school is when you went to school for it? For music, yeah. So it's been about a year now since you've been out of school? No. Oh, shit. Four years now. Four years? Yeah. All right, bet. So are you confident with what you're dropping now? Very confident. Not bad. But yeah. oh, you just got to put in the time Hell yeah. to get the product. You feel 100%. me? Like diamonds aren't made. Overnight. It takes time. Yeah. It can takes time. And then it's like, I'm happy I took the time. I'm happy I didn't, you know, get famous or go viral when I wasn't ready to. Yeah. Know, because now if I go viral, I'm confident the next thing I'll bring is, you know, going to be propelled by what I just did. Because right. It's, it's quality. You won't be freaking out trying to figure exactly. out how do I do that again? Exactly. Like, oh, I have a formula. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Exactly. One second. One second. Let's watch that. Expand the view. Um, do you want some tea? It's a uh, chocolate truffle peach. I like to try it. Right. Um, shout out to Buddha. Calling the tea. Shout out to Buddha. But, um, how many songs do you have out now? I actually have one song out. I'm dropping another one. Right. Yes, sir. I'm dropping another one next month, hopefully. What's the name of it? The first one is titled Fresh, and it's really just about... Um, so like I said, I've been doing music for a long time. I did put out a bunch of music, but I, I kind of took them down eventually because I felt like they didn't align with my brand and what I'm doing right now. So back then I was more into hip hop, yeah. but not into Afrobeats. Yeah. So I, don't know, I just didn't want to have too many co conflicting things out there. So with Afrobeats, the first song I, I dropped was a uh, title fresh. I dropped that in November of last year. And uh, it's kind of just like, um. A song I used to like boost myself, like, you know, I, it, the, the song goes, I'm fresh and clean, fine boy in the yard, I be the girl and daddy, yeah. I be the girl and sugar. So it's just like, I don't know, like just, you know, boosting my ego type shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've actually seen you perform that. Yeah. And that's another thing, uh, I didn't realize I had already met you. I met you at the Sound of You Live. No, yeah, yeah. I, when I saw you, just now I was like, <laughs> you feel me? Because uh, Leonte was like, oh, I have a friend. And I was like, all right, cool. And so I was thinking it was somebody I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's my boy. He always put me on. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Everybody needs friends like that. 100%. Oh, uh, do you guys do music together? Our genres are very, well, his genre, he's a very, how'd you say, he's a free spirit when it comes to music. Yeah. He doesn't let nothing, like no boundaries, you know, 
Uh, so I guess it could work. We could do an Afro Me song together, but we haven't really had the the opportunity to do that yet. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Oh, who's somebody that you do want to work with? It could be somebody who's famous or just somebody, you know. <laughs> it's hard to say because I feel like not everybody like fits every song. Yeah. Like sometimes I might want to work with somebody, but I don't have anything that would go with that person. So <laughs> I can't tell you off the top of my head, but it's like if I'm working on something and then I just like can imagine somebody, you know, but off the top of my head, I can't tell you. Sometimes it's good to pick people that you don't really know mm -hmm. how it's going to work out though. Cause then you just stretch yourself as an artist and you add hundred percent to your tool bag. hundred percent. And you make stuff that is like, like one thing about me in music, I don't like making the same song twice. Yeah. It's like if I already did that, I already made that sound, like obviously like your my um my natural sound is still gonna be there, you know, like what makes me me is gonna be there. But there has to be that, you know, new element that people haven't heard from me before. So I do like that in terms of like trying weird stuff out, you know. Yeah. You never know. No, for sure. Yeah. And so now that you went to school for music, did you go for music production? music production uh, at first then like a year into it i was like uh, maybe i could start a record label at some points so i eventually double majored music production and music business but yeah. uh have you been putting the business side of it to work not really no i mean i, I guess i put it for myself right right you know like i, I like nobody's gonna ever catch me in a bad deal <laughs> you cannot like if anyone is out there watching and you know thinks i'm a you know i'm a victim i will never be a victim i know too much what's the piece of advice you have for people who don't understand all the lingo within contracts get somebody who understands the lingo <laughs> i don't know like it's it's hard like if you put a contract in front of me i can read it and tell you if, if it's if it's gonna be a good deal or not for myself yeah but you also have to think of like you know your current situation like no, yeah. maybe you might have to lose out on some money for a little bit in order to get that little popularity that you need you know because like your music is already good you just need that little boost you know to get yourself that platform you need basically so like i, don't, I wouldn't mind like you know giving up like a, a an ep or even an album you know to, to a label if, if it's gonna serve me later down the line no yeah. yeah so in other words look at what you have to give in order to get what you're getting 100 percent. but i'll say Two things you should look out for. One is the word perpetuity. Ah, if it says perpetuity, forever. we got a lot of questions to talk about. Yeah. Oh. And then if it says name, voice, likeness, we have a lot to talk about and what all this encompasses. 100%. And there's a third one I'm going to throw in there. If you see the word master. <laughs> the master. Of the, yeah. Especially in sound. Yeah. If yeah. you see the word master. master and it's not just talking about getting one. <laughs> we have questions. It's not necessarily make or break with the right clarity. Yeah, 100%. You just have to, you know, know what you're signing. You yeah. Know, versus just sign, like, I don't know. Yeah. And I feel like, like, going to a different, like, um aspect of my career, acting and modeling, I sign contracts. Right. All the time. Right. Like, I, like, it's not a regular job where you, you know, you sign once and like, you that's just work for the next six years, six years or something. Fired yeah. Then you get your W2s. No, no, no. I worked a, a job last uh, Thursday, worked a different one on Friday. Said, you know, like, it's just, it just keeps coming. So you always have to know what it says. You have to, I mean, like, obviously, like most times you don't want to read the whole contract right. every time. But, but sometimes you got to skim them. You have to skim it at least and look for those, like, like those words you just said. You have yeah. to find those specific words to make sure you're not you know, putting yourself in Have you ever had one that you did, like, skim through and you had to be like, hold on, and take it to somebody and ask? 100%. Um, so I started with background acting when yeah. I became an actor. And I don't know if you heard about the writer's strike yeah. that happened last year, and actor's strike. Uh, the biggest thing was the that they wanted to start taking our images. And so they'll pay us once for a job. Right, but they could use your... Your image. Yeah. And, and, and those jobs, like, you get, like... Hundred dollars, hundred twenty five at best, hundred thirty six yeah, at no, best, sure. you know. And then they're like, "All right, we'll pay you hundred thirty six. We're gonna use you for this project, right?" Right. For per, per, per how do you say the word? Perpetuity. For perpetuity. Perpetuity. For perpetual perpetuity. Use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they'll take that and you know they'll use it forever. And all you got from that is one hundred and thirty six dollars at best. No, yeah. Like what? No, hell no. So I took it to them, and you know they were like, "If you want the job, you can do it. If you don't, you don't." Then don't. Yeah. I was like, "I don't." And yeah. I left. You know, so. There's definitely a lot of stuff like that. No, one thing I would say is for anyone, just because you're new or you feel like you don't know, 
if you feel hesitant about it, it's okay to ask questions. Is uh the very first modeling job that I had, bro, was something I booked myself. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yeah, they sent me a contract. And I just saw the word perpetual use. And I was like, this isn't enough money. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, that's the, like you said, it's not a make or break if the money's enough. Right. Like, I, I've definitely signed some stuff in, in that word. I don't, I can't say it. <laughs> I've definitely signed. You think about this yeah. Job. I've definitely signed some stuff in, you know, perpetual. Perpetual. Perpetuity. But I, I, like, I felt like the money was enough. Right. You know, so. And if, depending on what the project is, sometimes you, like, don't have a choice. Or, like, say, it's for the thing I did. They say the pictures were for brochures that were going to be at a conference. Mm -hmm. And so they would have been out of date. Yeah, at some point. Yeah. You yeah, feel me? Yeah. So I was like, mm, nah. I mean, also, like, sometimes you're in a bad spot financially. So it's like, I, I guess. And you might just take it. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I still brought it to them. And they ended up changing the contract, mm -hmm. gave me a little more money, and put an actual time stamp yeah. on the day to use. You feel me? And then what was the other one? Oh, it was another photo shoot. And after that one, I didn't know the product when I first said yes. Mm -hmm. It was for Nintendo and Anchor, bro. And so even after they changed the use, I was like, that's still not enough money, bro. Like, this is an international yeah, company. Bro, and I'll tell you something. Like, I'm not going to talk about the companies because I sign stuff. Most, <laughs> most of these companies, like the biggest ones, they pay so little. Bro, they pay so Bro, people will be like, oh, you're on TV. Oh, you're in that. You know, like the crumbs I got. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to talk. The reason we don't talk yeah. about it is because we don't even, it wasn't even substantial, bro. Like you said, like I was on three different locations in one week. Yeah. That was just another one of these yeah. locations, bro. All right. Some of them are cool. Not to say it's not fun. No, I've worked on cool sets. I've had so much fun. I met cool people. What's the best set you think you've been on? I can't talk about them right now. <laughs> yeah, I can't talk about them just yet. But I did do this one thing. I think I can talk about it at this point. Uh, it was um, like a hologram thing. Yeah. So basically, they were going to uh, use my image. And like I was going to be like some soldier. And I think we were playing it in Kentucky or some shit like that. And uh, it was pretty cool. You know, like to see the kind of technology. Like, yeah. This is technology you see like that is used to make the biggest movies. And, you know, so... I've been on some cool sets. I just can't. Okay, you just talk about like not the story or what you were doing, but just like what it was like. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of well, what it was like is like what most projects I feel are like. It takes an army basically to get like the littlest section of a project, and you can see how much money they have to spend on stuff like that. So it's crazy to me how they don't pay enough, you know. Like they, it's, it's, it's a, it's a moving like, um, factory, you know, you got to go through hair, you got to go through makeup, you got to go through, um, the, the, the producers and the directors. And then it, it's a lot, you know? for sure. yeah. but it's, it's definitely an experience. It's like, if I, I like to say this to people, I'm getting paid to live my dreams because it's like, this is what I'd rather be doing. I'd rather not be in an office hunched over a desk or computer, you know? So I get the opportunity to chase my dreams and make a living, you know? Up till, you know, like this writer strike ended, I was doing other stuff to make money, but now solely pursuing my dreams and I'm able to survive off of that. So it's, it's a dream come true. So how long have you been in the acting and modeling space? So, like I said, music was about 12, 12 ish years. Uh, acting, acting, I took a, co a class in college for acting and it was fun. You know, like we just do like exercises. Sometimes we'll sleep in class the whole day. So I was like, that's, that's, <laughs> what? that's, that's fun. I ain't had that. Yeah. Nice. It was like, just to like to loosen up. But I was like, okay, that's what you want, teacher. So that was cool. And then I came to LA for the first year. So I, I moved to LA because of, I wanted to be a sound engineer because I was like, I want to be a musician, but I need to make money. And sound engineering looked like a good way to make money. It's not really that much these days because most people can do everything at home on their computer. But uh, so I came out here. It was a tough first year. You know, things were just not going my way. Then eventually I was like, you know what, I'm going to take this, uh, you know, I'm going to take it, take it by the horns, basically. So I called this one lady. She she started like, you know, teaching me. I went to her for coaching for like a year. Then eventually I decided to just get into background acting. So since the acting class I took till now, it's about two years. 
Yeah, but officially I've been acting for about a year. Alright, yeah. uh, And then modeling, my friend Leonte, he invited me to a fashion show in March of 2022. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And I was like, I think I could do this too. I ain't gonna lie. And he, I made a joke to him. I was like, bro, I think I could do this. He was like, all right, bet, do it. I was like, I was like, I'm gonna do it. He was like, <laughs> he was like, yeah, bro, do it. So I was like, all right, bet. So I ended up, uh, you know, signing up for like a fashion show. I got accepted into it. I do you remember what it was? The model experience. Yeah. So I got into that. I uh, walked. I was so nervous the first time. Why were you nervous? I don't know. It's like. They're going to judge me. Am I walking right? Like, I don't know. Walking is such an awkward, like, activity. Oh, when everybody was looking. Yeah. Because you, you feel your body. Yep, like, yep. You feel all the movements. Yeah. And you're like, oh, my arm just went too high. Bro, honestly, and, like, I'd never taken any classes for model walking or nothing like that. Runway walking. So what I did was, if I'm walking to the store, I'm practicing. Yeah. If I'm on a treadmill, I'm practicing. So I just kept doing stuff like that consistently. And I can say I was better than most people. Even though it was my first time, you know. But the nerves were still there for sure. I, I was lucky enough I got to go two times that day. So I went the first time, the nerves were there. The second time was still there, but I was like, I already did this before. Right, right. It wasn't that bad. I could do it again. So I, I did that. And um, after the fashion show, uh, I was like, I, I feel like if I got signed to an agency, like I'd made it. As, as a, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I tried like really hard to get signed and bro, they were not. It was very hard, let's just say. How'd you go about trying to get signed? So the same company, the model experience, they had this package where uh you pay like a certain amount of money, I think it was like ninety bucks, and you get put into like a Zoom meeting yeah. to meet up with like um uh, model agencies. Bro, these these people would not even look at half of the people. They did they didn't look at me, I'm gonna tell you straight up. You know, like everybody would it just be little squares? Yeah, yeah, you just like look at them like on their phone or doing something else and I was like, damn bro. I was like, honestly, man, I don't even need this. So I was like, forget it. I started doing my own thing, you know, uh, booking my own jobs. Yeah. I applied for this one job and my agency, uh, SCE agency, shout out to them. I love them. So my agency, they uh, they found me like while I applied to that job and they were like, we like your look. We think, you you know, you'd be a good fit for our agency. Would you like to um, audition? So yeah. Like, Why not? So I auditioned. I got accepted. They, they sent me like the craziest auditions. Like, I'm just like. Well, like, really? Okay. So uh, I've been with them for about 10 months or nine or 10 months now. And definitely a really good agency to be with. Where do you look for modeling jobs? Because I know for acting, there's a like casting network. Yeah. yeah. So most people always choose one or the other. And I don't know why. I feel like that's a bad strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you want to do something like this full time. No, I hear you. Uh, but I use Actors Access, Backstage, Casting Networks. I'm signed with like a bunch Backstage of... Backstage has modeling stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I got my first modeling gig this year. I think it was like four days of work. It was pretty consistent work for um on backstage. It was like for some for some computer program yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So um I I use all three of them. I spent like sixty bucks on all three of them, you know, a month. That's not a lot of money because like one job you made that money back. Oh, you know? yeah. So I use all three of them. I use Instagram, I use word of mouth. Uh I'm also like with like a lot of smaller, like, you know, Agent, uh, talent agency. Yeah. Yeah. So they reach out to me sometimes and they're like, we have this job. Would you be interested? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Do you feel like you enjoy one of the three better than any of the, like one of the rest? Um, between acting, modeling and music. I feel like they all go hand in hand. Like that's also why, because I, I have certain friends who like to do a million things, yeah. you know, and they're like, Oh, how can you say, like, I don't tell them you can't because I don't feel like anyone can judge what someone can or can't do. But I'm like, oh, that's a lot to do. And they're like, yeah, but like you do three things. And I'm like, yeah, but they're all intertwined. As a, let's let's say I'm a musician, for example. As a musician, you have to take pictures. That's where modeling comes in. You know, you gotta get your cover art. You gotta get this and that. Yeah. You also need music videos. Sometimes you could be more creative with your music video and just not right. rap in front of a car the entire time. You could act a little skit at the start or at the end of the video to make it more interesting. Yeah. You know, just I feel like. They're all kind of intertwined. I feel like I enjoy music the most because it's the thing I've been doing the longest. And yeah. I feel like it's the thing I'm the best at. Acting, I've definitely improved. I did like a, you know what a, you know a self-tape audition is? Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just make it. <laughs> no, no. I met somebody recently who didn't know. I'm an actor. Bro. Okay. 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 Good. 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 <laughs> good. 
Uh, but uh, so I did this self tape audition for this. Um, hopefully, I get it. This feature film, and I was just like, look, I watch it every day. I'm just like, wow, like that's so good. Like, wow. I'm like, bro, because I I remember my self tapes when I started. I was how long have you been doing self tapes now? A year. A year. Yeah, I was horrendous. No, I didn't. I was not even up to a year. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, like about a year. Yeah, I just remember like I did. Uh, I, 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 I remember looking at the self tape from like way, way back then compared to this. I'm like, I'm so much more confident, you know, like, because there's little things I could do, like, that I do that I, I know I'm nervous. Like, I my sway when I'm, right. you know, like, I'm like, I don't do that anymore. I know where to look. I know how to, you know, even like my acting obviously got better, but like my confidence, I'm like more in my body, body language. Yeah, my body yeah. language and all that. So, oh, the acting class that you took, did you do like any body work? No. So the first one I did was, um, it was a year and yeah. that was, that's why I feel like I kind of wasted my money. I ain't even gonna lie, but I feel like no experience is wasted, but she focused on voice more than anything, you know? So she was like, you know, your voice is the strongest. It, it's kind of the strong, in her opinion, the strongest element. She said like, if you get the voice right, the body kind of just comes with that. So I, I focused on that for the whole year with her. Eventually I started feeling like I wasn't getting anything new. Yeah. You know, that I, I've learned everything she had to offer. Yeah. Just from what I'm going to say, and my takeaway with that, is she's right where if you have the voice, you're a lot of the way there. And I just don't think that if you have the voice, the body will follow for everybody. Yeah. You feel me? Just like you said, that's her thing. Yeah. I feel like more so if the body follows, the voice will follow. And I feel like that's easier for more people to pick up because our body is structured a certain way. You 100%. Feel me? So if you've been this your way, voice changes. everybody's voice, you feel me, you're going to do the same yeah, thing. Yeah. If you open up this way, your vo- you're going to get the I same quality I completely everywhere. agree. And so, so after I left uh, her, I went to a bunch of um, group acting classes. Yes. She was a private coach. So I tried a bunch of group acting classes and they weren't you know, pretty well, but it's like just here and there. I think I went to like a total of 10, 10 sessions of those. Then I was like, all right, I'm, I need a new coach. But the thing also is that the lady, the first uh, lady, she was like a really much older white lady, I'm a young black man, yeah. you know? So I feel like she couldn't relate to me on so many levels. So my next coach was a, you know, young black man like myself, maybe a little older than me. And he focused more on body. You know, so I felt like I got the best of both. I got some from yeah. her and some from him. So uh, after a while, too, I decided to stop, you know, because I also don't want to just be paying money forever if it's the same thing we're going over every single week. Um, but I stopped with him. And then at that point, I felt like I had the knowledge. At that point, it was up to me to implement it and, you know, learn myself, you know. And that's kind of what I did. And to see, because even when I was with him, I was definitely struggling still you know i wasn't confident in my acting you know he was like you need to play more yet you're so stiff like you're, you're an actor get into the character you know and now bro like i i'm like yo <laughs> i'm like yo bro who is this who is this like i'd be i'd be like smiling in bed watching these videos like <laughs> no, that's how it got to be that's yeah bro i will say though that um it takes time to be able to put them in your body whether it's learning how to use your voice or learning how to use your body because after you understand it you got to do it and that's how you said you were walking everywhere you went but paying attention with like how you went down the runway you were putting it on and in your body you feel me so it's like you have to do that with your acting as well in order to stop thinking about it to make it natural because the overall point is to make it seem natural. Like what we're doing right now, we're not acting. No. But if this was a movie. Right. If like, we had to do this, yeah. we would have to sit here and talk. Like this set, you exactly how we're doing yeah. it right now. And that's not overdo it or underdo and that's it. And the, that's the mistake a lot of people make. And I guess, you know, I made it too. It's like, I feel like if I'm not doing a lot, I'm not really acting. You yeah. Know? I'm like, is this boring for the people? Who are? Because like, realistically, nobody wants to watch us in our regular day-to-day lives. Right. That's boring as hell. Is what it seems like. But until you yeah. give it a reason. Yeah. And even I feel like social media has helped if you're paying attention, break that barrier because people will do the most simple thing, bro. Yeah. But make it dramatic. Yeah. You feel me? Like making popcorn and just the lighting. Uh-huh. And then the way they do it, they like make it dramatic. You only see the time. Yeah. On the thing. Yeah. 
and then quick, yeah. you feel me, slide yeah. down. And it's like you could turn things into a bigger moment, but part of it is having a reason why the detail to it, a buildup with some anticipation, mm-hmm. and at the end, make it aesthetic. Yes, sir. And that also goes, <laughs> that, that also goes back to um, my, 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 my education in music, like sound engineering specifically. My school like brought a lot of very established sound engineers for us to like you know just like spend the day with them and yeah. know, pick their brains. And I was always the kid in front of the class, like because I because I growing up I hated working with other people. I I learned how to write music, produce music, engineer music. I don't do all that anymore because it's a lot, and I have you know other things I'm doing. But I learned how to do it because I would send my song to someone, I pay them. It'll take them months to send it back to me and I'm like bro I need to learn how to do this all myself you know? yeah so I learned how to do all that stuff but yeah so this guy came to our, our our campus and uh he was talking about how mixing is not as complicated as most people make it so he had an example he pulled out a session that he was going to mix in front of us this man did it so quickly yeah it sounded really good right but I was like nah that's not it you got to do more like right what, what what do you mean right. that, what do you mean that's it yeah like, you that's, like, no no like yeah. and because like in my head it's like so much goes into making a mix sound as good as it is to be on radio and all yeah. that so why would you just do that in two seconds what right. are you talking about you know so i feel like that's with everything you know you don't have to always do too much sometimes right you know, less is more yeah i think who said some big actor said this like stillness is the hardest thing stillness for yeah no, it's all about stillness. It's all about stillness. That's what really makes the character come through. Because when you're still, you know, in your body, like what's going on, your your focus, yes. your concentration, and what's going on in your mind, like people can see the centers. Eyes, yeah, you know. So, I feel like do do as little as you can, but like do as little as you can externally, and yeah. most times it'll come out. You know, as more. Yeah. yeah, and see, you even said yourself seeing the progression in your tape from the swaying and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It's just energy yeah. that you're bleeding off, you feel yeah. me? And even um, gestures. Yeah. It's like when I was in school, sometimes our teacher would literally tie people's hands behind their backs while they did their pieces. Or even if in a scene, mm-hmm. tie their arms behind their back. Because people do this, like, you know, you get uncomfortable. Or even too much gesturing, gesturing. speaking with their hands yeah. or reaching out to the person. Yeah. When it's like your other teacher was saying, let your voice carry all of that action for you if you can get your voice yeah the people can see it and feel it 100%. you don't have to move it all out 100%. but once you do because it'll be poignant and you'll move less but the movement will be direct and actually that's something uh so i do audition like self-tape auditions and it's like hard to find people to read for you like yeah your friends and family so there's this app i use we audition and uh they I, I meet like a lot of very like established people in, in their own craft and some of them are acting coaches as well. And one of them she said something. She said, You're moving too much. Yeah. She said, Every time you move, like let it be with purpose. Like, yeah. what are you moving? You're moving to show you're angry. You know, you could throw your hands up, but like don't keep doing it for like yeah, if you do the, it four times, yeah. Like, how many times are it you doesn't it, it doesn't have the effect anymore. Yeah. You've done it too many times. Yeah. And obviously in like real life we don't think about it like that. Right. But we don't also do it like that. Yeah. You know? Because we move when the emotion hits us. It's built up exactly. and the point is there. Yeah. 100%. Even with my hands. Yeah. Like, you did, when like, the emotion look at this, like built up. Exactly. So the key exactly. words in the sentence. Even there, bro, key words <laughs> in, in the sentence. Is like I'm not <laughs> exactly doing it on a certain time or a certain rhythm. It's when it matters. 100%. Like, 100%. So, but yeah, and that's just part of the craft of it. And that also goes into something else I was gonna say. It's just like it takes time mm-hmm. to understand it all to put it on to get comfortable with it and then be able to repeat it mm-hmm. but then the most important thing that even i forget have fun bro, bro it's like so, so <laughs> you, i mean you're an actor do you ever like do your homework like try to understand certain things like the character's objective and things yeah. like that yeah so i learned like that's an important part. When I'm doing an audition, I'm like, say with auditions, I don't do that. I don't, anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't care to do yeah, that's too much do. work. Unless I, it's like a movie, yeah. you feel me? And I'm a feature, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm a meaty character yeah. in this boy, like, yeah. with progression development. Like, this is one of three scenes I've already had a chance to see. Then I might have to understand you. But I got five auditions that I'm like 
I have to like turn in today. So like I'm not gonna do that for you. Right. Like, if it's a commercial No, 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 no. Who just cares just for... be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? But um so I learned that doing that is very important, but it's like don't dwell on it, you know. Yeah. Do it do it like understand the character's objective. You know, if you have substitutions in your life you can use for a character. Those those things really work, at least I've noticed. But let it go at the end. Yeah. You know, like all right, I've done all this, I understand the character like on a deeper level. So everything I'm gonna like, you know, do is just gonna come out like from there. Yeah, yeah like I actually from that place. Hundred yeah. percent. So I don't need to, you know, work so hard to like, okay, so this character, I'm gonna use my mom to replace this character. You don't need to do that because you already feel certain things for that character. Yeah. But like you said, have fun at the end because now that you understand that character so much, you're not stuck doing it one way. You yeah. Know, you do a take, you do it one way. But because you're having fun, the next time you do a it's take, completely different. Completely different. Yeah. And like, if I say this sentence to you right now, I'm saying it this way. But if I'm saying the sentence to you right now, I could also say it this right. way. You know, like I could switch it up like that. So that's just part of being a human being. And yeah. being an actor is being a human being. One of my coaches said, being an actor is like, this is your hand, right? When you take a glove and put it on top of it, that's the character you're putting on top of the glove. You're still in there, you know, but the character is living through you, basically. Oh, that's a good analogy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's definitely fun. It's very fun. Definitely fun. It's definitely a lot to think about, too, though. It is. Especially yeah. the people, I could do that. No. Oh, bro. You, you could eventually. It's just, you the can't. The thing is, you think you could be that person right there in that scene? I've had some, like, crazy roles I've had to be, like, and I, I did a, a short film. I don't know if I, I can I talk about it? I'm not going to talk about it, but I did a short film in December, and basically I had to play a character, um, that he went through some stuff, you know, and it's like f- from where I am today in January compared to where I'm in December, there's so many things I know I could have done better, yeah. you know, as an actor. But I still think I did pretty well for someone who's been acting for like a year, you yeah. know, and it's because of the dedication that I put into. But like to see like somebody's life like that and to have to react it like it's crazy because while I was on set, I was just like, man, I'm walking in this man's shoes technically, you know, that's a crazy thing to think about. So. People will think, oh, yeah, I can do it. I'm not saying you can't. You can't right, do anything right. you set your most things you set your mind to, you know. But it's it's an exp- it's 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 tough. No, yeah, and yeah. you have to be ready mentally. Sometimes 100%. to step in, it's just like you have a deep character, you got to be prepared to step into that deepness yeah. and still take that glove off and yeah. flex like normal. Like, like normal, yeah. like, bro. I'd be doing some crazy roles that, like, you know. My character is like this scary person. Then after I was, I like turned to the person that I was like terrorizing. So how was your weekend? You know, like where it's like you gotta be able to, you know, turn it on and off. Yeah. Like it's a little switch. Yeah. I had a fashion show last night. How did it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a different, um, different type of fashion show. I haven't done fashion shows for like a while because I've been just acting like a lot. I'm trying to get like more focused on modeling this year, but it went pretty well. I got a new tattoo at the end of the what day. Is it? It's just like their logo, but I got it kind of small and uh, I get like 20% off for the rest of my life at their store. That's, so, actually kind of <laughs> that's a fire. They're, they're called the Milk Room. I'm just giving them a quick shout out. Oh, definitely. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so I was like, why not? Just put it where I don't really care. Is that your first time? No. Well, technically, I got like five, but one of the one of them was put on top of the other one. All right, yeah. was it to cover it up? To cover it up, yeah. 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 Was it somebody's name? No, hell no, hell no, hell no. <laughs> no bad break. <laughs> Never, bro. No, no, no. I don't think I could ever be that in love to put someone's name. Ever? No. Never. No. If I put someone's name, it'll be my family. You know, like because my fa- family's forever. What about your wife? She's not family. I mean, she could be, and then she could not be at some point. Oh, you yeah. 20 years. Yeah, like... All right. But I'm 20 years, what I got to do a tattoo for it? <laughs> He's like, I done got your name on everything yeah, else. Yeah, like, where, where you going with my will? You on yeah. my bank account? Like, you on my credit cards? <laughs> Why you got to be on my body? It's everywhere. He's <laughs> like, this is my last unmarked spot. This is all I got. <laughs> <laughs> this is all I got left. <laughs> Can I at least have the dignity of my flesh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Right. Shout to that. Shout to that. That's a, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, I have you drink sake before? I have not. Never? No. Um, but I do love Japanese culture. I actually, you know, understand a little bit. Really? Yeah. Have you ever been? I've not. I'm planning to go this year. 
Mm-hmm. My roommate wants to move out there, actually. It's going to be surprising me, but he's speaking it. Uh, I have my friend come over with his wife, who uh-huh. is Japanese. Uh-huh. He's over here talking to her about stuff she didn't even know. I can't have a full, like, no, no, I could probably have, like, a like a, like a a regular greeting conversation. Like, let me yeah. introduce myself. Hajime mashite. Watashi wa omiete desu. Dozo, yoroshiku. You know? And a little bit, you know? I don't know. I started watching anime, and I, I, I was, like, always curious. I'm like, why did they say it like that? Like, that's such an interesting word. Like, what is that word? And then out of nowhere, I was just, like, looking stuff up. Yeah. You know, before I knew, like, learn how to introduce myself. I could say, like, a bunch of stuff. You know, like, at the end of this, I'm going to tell you sayonara. You know? <laughs> stuff like that, you know? See you oh, later. Yeah. What's your favorite uh, anime? One Piece. All right. One Piece is too good, man. And it's because, like, I feel like One Piece is, like, something that will go on forever. Like, I'm going to watch that shit till I die. <laughs> Have you ever gone to any of the conventions? No, I haven't. But I, I what's that place called? Um, I think Little Tokyo. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, somewhere here. Oh, here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I went there one time, and I think there was, like, a little... Um... Booth? Booth. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. That was pretty cool. But I definitely plan to travel a lot more this year. Japan is definitely on my list. Oh. Where all have you been, travel-wise? Okay, so I grew up in Nigeria, and I'll tell you, like, my childhood was a lot of traveling, for sure. I went to Turkey, Madaba. I went to Dubai. I went to England. I kind of went to Egypt for, like, a day. <laughs> yeah, like, I was going to Turkey, but we stopped in Egypt. And, gotcha. Yeah. Um, what's the way, man? Obviously, I've been to America. Been to Mexico now. Yeah, just... Where's your favorite out of all of those? Dubai. Dubai. Dubai is so nice. Yeah. Huh. Dubai is really nice. Bro, see, I said I wanted to go there, but found out they're strict as hell. Oh, yeah. Like, they catch you small... Bro, I went to school with this one one dude, and he eventually moved to Dubai, and they caught him with weed. They gave this man life. Bro, that's what... They the, gave him bro, life. That's what my friend said, bro. She was supposed to get on an episode before she left. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Fatima. Uh... And she was like, yeah, man, I love it here. When I met her, bro, literally, she was a model for a music video I was shooting, right? We finished her scenes, and she came back <laughs> with a lip joint in her hand, bro. Like, I can't I can't get her my ride. Like, uh-huh. you want to smoke? And I'm like, yo, put that out. You can't smoke in the <laughs> studio. Like, you can come back in. Uh, uh, long story short, it became the homie, yeah. bro. And so she was just telling me how much she loved it being here because yeah. she could smoke where she wanted right. and like people were chill and you could even smoke cigarettes on the street. And then she came and spent the night before she flew out. It was mm-hmm. right next to LAX, yeah. right? And uh, she was just talking. She was like, yeah, they'll give you life. I turned around. I said, huh? You said it was strict. You didn't yeah. tell me they put people in jail. Her life is gone. Like, bro, like the only reason this man... The dude I knew like might have gotten out because like his dad was a politician. Like most people I knew, you know, like right. were in that circle. So he his dad probably, you know, was able to get him out like by talking to the prep. Like, you know, somebody up talked to somebody. Yeah. yeah. So that man's like life was over. Cause like and it wasn't even a lot of weed. It was like, like Bro, yes. I was like Dubai. I thought I wasn't gonna come. No, I'm... maybe for a two, three day trip yeah. showing out by now, it's, if if you're if you can control yourself and you know let the weed go for a little bit, it's not even just weed, bro. It's just, Obviously, like other shit, it's just strict in general. Yeah. She said, bro, it's just like you drink in the wrong place. Yeah. Like if you're being too obnoxious, obnoxious like yeah. so many things. I was like, bro, I might just accidentally get drunk, forget that I'm not in America, walk outside. Like next thing you know, they're like, where Chuck go? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's a fact. That's a fact. Like, but I don't trust myself. Yeah, nah. But that I think that'd definitely be my favorite place. The place I visited the most is probably England. I just went there a bunch because I had like cousins that lived out there. Yeah. Like I think I stayed for like three months one summer. Like I was just it was fun. What was the, your favorite thing about England? <laughs> that the the the, the steering wheels on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> was it just like Amusement every time. Yeah, because like, drives. like I said, like I see the person I walk, in, I'm like, that's so weird. And like, I was a kid too, so I was like, that's, I guess that's what's like, like what excites me or something. <laughs> you just never got over. Yeah, I was like, well, that's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, this is a mind fuck. Oh yeah, what's going on? What bro? is happening here? That's silly. Oh, yeah, it's all, it's all programming. Hundred percent. They're all programmed. You feel me? Yeah. There's, like, there's no reason why they can't drive on that side. You can drive. You can drive from the back seat if you wanted to. 
programming. Programming. I was like, what are you yeah. talking about, Nate? How, where are you at? Program. I was like, where have you, where have you been? I need that card. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. That's if you want to die. Yeah. Or if you, uh, what's his name? Uh, Vin Diesel. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that man can drive anything. Bro. Have you seen the last movie? I've stopped to watch. I can't. Brad, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, I used to anticipate them, and then I realized I hadn't seen one or two, and so I was like, oh, I, gotta watch. Uh-huh. I started watching one in the last like two weeks, bro. I was just like, this. Are you? Are you going to space in a car? Yeah. Dude, drop out of a copter in the truck or not even a truck the same the same car he been driving since and that's, the, the, that's what i'm gonna say to like bro this car still like what kind of how much mileage on this car the mileage whatever <laughs> they they mechanics either replaced engine he did he, you feel me he uh-huh. replaced everything what kind of frame uh-huh bro they dropped i don't who knows how many feet it was a helicopter bro on the freeway they didn't land on the freeway they didn't have no landing pad they didn't even slow down the helicopter bro they just he said to the freeway and just got over it. My man free fell and landed on a car and then drove up, drove up the car. Oh, I said, Lord. why is that car totaled in his not? Good Lord. Where is the logic? <laughs> Where the physics, the logic is Vin Diesel. It's Vin Diesel. You feel me? Yeah, that bro. was the uh, equivalent of Jesus in that moment. Wow. And that other car was water. Yes. You feel me? Yes. That's Walking what on that cars. Was. Yeah. yeah. He just, well, he drives on driving cars. Driving on cars. Like, but that's not even the worst part, bro. He took the same car and drove it you know how freeways will, like, the good one, yeah, yeah. You have one up here when yeah. my man's drove over. To the one lord? And it was still not a pop tire, not a bump bumper. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, that ain't gone too far. <laughs> that ain't got too furious. I'm, like, I'm furious. Yeah. Uh, this this all happened way too fast. They're trying to put a, pull a fast <laughs> one on my slurs. Now I'm furious, yeah, bro. bro. I, it was too much. I might I might watch him again just because of, like, why not? You know, it's like a, tr- it's a tradition at you this point. Like, 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 I'll just give them their money. Yeah, dude, my mom loved it. I remember yeah. watching yeah. one, two, and three. Yeah. Yeah. We went to the movie. Yeah. But by the fifth one, I'm like, yo, can stop. Man. It was pushing in. They was pushing the belief. They're still going. Yeah. And I think they're not done. They're probably going to keep going for a while. I think they're supposed to have 10. They've passed 10 already. Yeah, I don't know where I got lost that day. They're going to keep going, right? Yeah, I'm it's over it. Ridiculous. Yeah.